Welcome back. It's another episode of the Forgotten Outdoors podcast. Uh, we just wanted to let you all know that we love getting your feedback. We love uh, hearing from our listeners. So you can email us, podcast at ForgottenOutdoors.com. You can also find us on all of your social media platforms. Well, not all of them. We're not on TikTok. Uh, but we are. <laughs> and never will be on TikTok. <laughs> but we are on uh, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. So go look us up. Also look us up on YouTube. Give our channel a subscribe and a like. Um, we're trying to drop some new uh, videos on there that aren't just our video podcast. So give it a listen. Give us a subscribe. And be sure to listen in whenever we get, bring you new videos. Yeah. We're excited for the episode today, guys. We're kind of doing a, a debriefing on our archery elk season, I think is what we were going to talk about, right? Yeah. Is that the plan? Yep. So yeah, uh, we're going to debrief. We're going to have an autopsy, live op- autopsy of what we did wrong <laughs> and, with our elk season. And, and a little and bit right. about what we did right. And right. And right. We had some successes. Um, neither of us bagged out on archery elk this year. Um, and we're going to dig into that today and kind of see like, what would we have done different? Because hindsight is twenty twenty. Always. Uh, you always, you know, you have an experience, you mess up, you do something stupid and you're like, yeah, we should have done something different. So, so what, what's one of the big takeaways, I guess, Tom, this is like one of your first archery elk seasons. Yes. Um, that you've, you've participated with being a shooter. Uh, what's one of your biggest takeaways, I guess, like overarching or what's your thoughts? Um, so yeah, like, like Ben said, this was my first season actually going out with a bow. Um, and honestly it was pretty tough so it was a tough season because um not only was it my first season but we were exploring some territory that we'd never explored before so that's i i would say that's one major takeaway is just kind of know your area and we knew that going into the season that we hadn't hunted it um but we figured there's no better time to learn it than now so we're kind of trying to figure out some of the units that we want to hunt here in idaho and uh so we did spend some time doing that so I guess the takeaway would be just to spend more time preseason, um, scouting the area, finding the elk, finding the people, or not the people, finding the animals that you want to find, and then... Uh, <laughs> the people. <laughs> <laughs> that was the problem. We kept finding the people. That was the problem. Yeah. But yeah, just just spending more time finding the animals preseason, that I think was huge. Um, and then beyond that, I mean, it was just kind of situational, some of the things that we learned like in the moment, but that yeah. would that would be one thing for sure. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I think that as of my archery elk hunting experiences, this year has probably been the least eventful, even from c- my first year. And and I think that's what it kind of boils down to a lot of is there was not much scouting done, especially in the area that we ended up hunting and, and we can make excuses and we, we will, <laughs> we, you know, it was just an uncommon year, uh, with launching this company, with starting new jobs, with moving, having babies. I mean, it was just, we just, there was other priorities that, that kind of took place there where we didn't spend a lot of time in the area that we were hunting elk. Yeah. We did some scouting in a different zone that we had kind of planned on hunting and then we reverted back to the unit that I shot my bull in last year that I was more familiar with, thinking we had better odds. Yeah. Turned and that, out to be a huge mistake. Yeah, and that was the thing is, so, like, the spot that we'd been scouting preseason, like, not even exaggerating, we had bears in there daily for, Every like, day. for like, a couple weeks, it seemed like. At, it, least, at least a week. Daylight hours, too. I mean, yeah. if you've hunted bears before... Most of the bears, most of the year, especially the big ones, they're like nocturnal, you know, in the middle of the night, they're coming in. No, this was every day. We had a bear at daylight hours. Yeah. It seemed like. And honestly, once we, once we launch this episode, I think maybe we'll post some of those on our Instagram account on the story. Some of the pictures. Yeah. Just, just Ooh, to give, and the videos too. Yeah. Just to give people an idea of what we were seeing. Cause that, that's what ended up deterring us is it was the season hadn't started yet. We got down to, we only had like a couple days before the season started. We had only seen bears. And so we elected to go in the zone that Ben hunted last year. Mm -hmm. Um, And then. (laughs) Which isn't a bad zone. No. And like I said, I shot a a decent bull there last year. But 
all the all the previous years I was up there a lot. I was I was scouting all the time. Yeah. And so I had a good idea of where the elk were, you know, where they were moving, what they were doing before the season started. But with this with this season, it was like honestly the day that the season opened, it seemed like all of a sudden it flipped. The bears weren't coming in as often. Now we had a bunch of cows, a bunch of bulls coming in. It was the weirdest thing. But there's no way you could have predicted that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, lessons learned. Next sure. year, I know what tag I'm going to get. Yep. And hopefully, it'll be the same. Hopefully, it wasn't a freak year. but And it wasn't like... Uh, we did have elk starting to come in like once September kind of started. Yeah. But we didn't have consistent elk until probably a week and a half into September. And then I would say it was like a week and a half period there where there was like a shooter bowl in hunting hours every day. Every day. Yeah. Every day. Sometimes there there was a couple, like two or three days where there were three bulls I would have shot in hunting hours. It was driving me insane. Yep. And we had, we had those cameras that would send pictures to your phone. And so Thomas and I would be out looking for elk, being like, where the heck are these things? Getting <laughs> pictures of bulls wallowing <laughs> in, a, in a unit that we couldn't hunt, in a, in a place we couldn't hunt. So that was very... Very frustrating. Yeah. And lessons and, learned. Yeah, and that's the thing is there's no way we could have predicted it. No. Um, New area. Yeah. And honestly, though, like for me, like the biggest thing this season that I was grateful for is just learning this unit. So yeah, the unit that we did end up hunting, I mean, we found a lot of really cool access points. Put some miles on. Put some miles on. We scouted a lot of good area. And we did get into elk. Yeah. We did. Yep. Not, none that we could get a shot a at, shot you know, at, whether no. they were too far or... Well, and, and I guess that's another point that we could bring up of while we're doing this debriefing, this autopsy, is one of the days that we got into the most elk, we, I think we screwed the pooch on. Yeah. Um, it was a new area <laughs> that we were going into, unfamiliar with it, and we hiked in, and we all kind of agreed on it. And it seemed like a good idea at the time that we were going to hike up in the dark and get up onto this ridge and have a good vantage point once we were getting into hunting light. Well, while we were hiking in, we busted a bunch of elk. Yeah, at least we assume, you know, because that's all we could hear. Yeah, and you could, like, we saw a bunch of sign once the sun came up yep. and you could smell them. But, yeah, we, we assumed. We didn't see them because it was black outside, but busted some elk. We sat this one clearing like we had planned, um, <laughs> called a little bit, didn't get any responses, did see a cow. Um, yeah. And then, and then we got impatient and we jumped up to, to move to another spot. And, like, I don't know, 15 yards behind us, some elk had been creeping up behind us. Um, hadn't made any sound, but we blew him out too. It, it was a yeah. I think that that morning that morning was a uh, probably the most frustrating because, um, yeah, like Ben said, it was like almost instant when we busted that that last bull that was just 15 yards behind us. When we busted him, it was like instant. We looked at each other and we're like, we should have sat that for another two hours. Like it was <laughs> that was like the All biggest us, mistake because yeah. it was like we had seen a cow. That came in like five minutes before shooting light. Um, didn't give us a really great shot, but we had seen one. And then, uh, yeah, and then just getting up, walking away like 15 minutes after we'd seen that. Yeah. That was just a mistake. It was. And so that that was one of the things that we kind of, we walked away from. We were like, what were we thinking? But, it was, I mean, it was it was like, like a live and learn moment. Right. And I think it's so easy to do. Like, I think it's easier to be patient when you are whitetail hunting in a in a tree stand when you are when you know you're supposed to be sitting yeah that's that's the plan yeah you sit down and you shut up and you wait for something to come in that's the game plan when you're up elk hunting archery elk hunting you get impatient especially when you're not seeing elk and and you want to make something happen you know you're like well okay uh, the elk aren't here i need to go and hike somewhere else to go find them where that is a good point. If you're not seeing elk, you know, you need to do something different. But at the same time, not having that patience, especially that one day for us, it screwed it up for us. Yeah. That was I think we would have, I think that we would have at least, you know, had a close shot at a bull or an elk if we would have been more patient that day, maybe not have hiked in in the dark because we, we bounced that one bull. And, and I'm not saying that that's in every situation. I think a lot of situations you hike in in the dark you get to a good spot for hunting hours. Right. But in this particular area, the way that it was set up and the visibility, I think that we, sh and especially the day it was like drizzling, I think that we should have waited till hunting hours to start hiking in. 
Yep. And then definitely that clearing, we just we just got impatient. We wanted to make something happen. It, it didn't seem like it was happening in my, our eyes, and we got rushed and kind of screwed it up. Yep. And, so, and, and then I guess another thing that we, we kind of got sucked into too was we were trying to get to the other side of this canyon where this bowl <laughs> went, and we just got in the nastiest, thickest brush and kept on trying to go, and it was bad. It just got nasty, and so we like <laughs> made so much noise. That day, honestly, it was like 10 o'clock in the morning. We've already tried to hike to that other canyon, <laughs> and we've made so much noise that we were like, yeah, well, I think we've killed this whole area for the rest of the season. Like anyway, it was we like moved on. We were like, yeah. we've blown every elk, elk out within two miles. <laughs> and so we we're like, let's <laughs> just go. Like let's move. So we end up hiking back out, getting in the truck, driving to a new spot, and it's just kind of how it is. But it's one of those things where I'm like, okay, if I'm hunting that same spot in the future, like I know what I'll do. Like yeah. I and and that's what's so cool about, um, you know, for us hunting. Like yeah, we've hunted since we were kids. Yeah, we've done it quite a few times but with every animal and with every area it's just different it's different and, and so it's still just learning mistakes yeah it's just learning yeah and those were mis- the mistakes that we had made where we haven't made those same mistakes on other hunts but we got caught up in in the excitement of it all or whatever it was with that day and and we made some mistakes and we learned from it yeah and i think like your original point thomas of like doing your homework and going out and scouting like that day that we went to that area we'd never been there before nope and so we didn't understand that, like, eh, maybe, we, I don't know, maybe we should wait till till hunting light to, to hike in. We didn't do the homework on that so that we didn't know. Yeah. And it, and it might have screwed us the opportunity to, you know, shoot a bull, put a elk down. Yeah. So, that I mean, that was just one day. Um, outside of that, like, there was other lessons learned. Um, something that was just kind of different this year, at least for Idaho, is it was just hot. It was hot. And we had a hard time getting any of these elk to communicate, to bugle, to do anything. Like so across the board, I think, not saying that the elk didn't talk, right? but I think that, that most people in the area that we were hunting anyways were kind of running into similar problems. And, and there was like, there was a day I went up and Ben wasn't there, but I went up and we ran into so many other hunters. It was the weirdest thing. Like... Uh, we, we get to this really good clearing. We're sitting in the spot. Um, and it was the craziest thing. So we're sitting there and all of a sudden we hear some moving or some movement in the bushes, like pretty close to us. So we're kind of getting all set, get ready. And then these two hunters just walk out into the middle of our clearing. And I was like, what are they doing? Like they blew, yeah. they blew it all up. And you know, it just kind of is what it is, but it's, it's just tough. Cause there's other people that are hunting. So you got to kind of be i guess knowledgeable of the places that other people know about and try to avoid them if you can uh but yeah that was that was a crazy day we seriously saw eight or nine different hunters throughout the day and so just kind of got to learn where to go and where not to go in those situations yeah and and i think that we we stumbled on some awesome country though this year (sighs) in this area i mean i don't think that you can only go and hunt the areas that you've scouted out previously during the season. I don't think that that's, you know, accurate at all. No. I think that you definitely want to do your homework, that you want to understand the areas, try to understand where the elk are going to be. But if you're not getting into elk sign, keep walking, keep hiking, keep moving. Look at your maps, figure out different spots because we. That, I guess that's a pro from this year is we did that a lot yeah we we traveled a lot a lot of new areas and we found some awesome spots where elk have been you know and there 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 was good elk sign not that we made it happen there because honestly we we didn't get out nearly as much as we probably should have you know like we didn't we were talking about it before this we were running to town talking about what we were going to kind of discuss tonight and you know thomas brought up the point where it's like next year i want to hike in somewhere and camp out for a couple days Whereas yeah. this year, with all the craziness, it was like we'd go out a morning, go out for a couple hours, maybe hit an afternoon here and there. And it just was so un- in- inconsistent that I think that we missed some opportunities there as well. Whereas if we would have spent more time, you know, we might have been had more opportunities for sure. Yeah. And I think that, I mean, my thought process behind that is just you can get into some deeper country, you can get to where nobody else has been, and then you have a couple days to let it all settle and let the elk come moving back in. If you make a bunch of noise one day, but you get to your spot and you're sitting there for two or three days, like, you know, you can make that gamble a little bit better instead of 
Well, we hiked in, made a bunch of noise, so we're done for the day because that's the only time that we dedicated was, you know, one morning or one one day. Right, and I think that 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 tactic where you are spending multiple days or some extended amount of time, it takes some of that urgency out of it. Yeah. Where you might make those rush decision decisions, decisions, I yeah. can't even talk. Uh yeah, it it takes that that edge of, oh, I have to get something done because I'm leaving in a couple hours. I don't know when I'm going to get back out. <laughs> it, it makes it hard. It makes it rush. It's like, I can't sit this clearing. There's no elk. We got to move. We got to find these things. Whereas if you have a couple days, you sit a ridge. We'll, we'll bring our bows, but we're not planning on killing anything. Let's sit a ridge, see if we can see elk, and that's where we'll start in the morning. Yep. So I think, you know, hindsight, will. I think it's worth trying next year. Obviously, we're going to try the unit that we passed up on. <laughs> this year for but sure. um yeah i think you know for for me that's how i do my deer hunt every year we go out for three or four days and it's produced good results you know we've been able to get into deer pretty much every year i go and i think that that for me is the difference is it's just you get there and you can you have time you're not you're not feeling rushed until obviously the last day last day you're rushed but yeah you know it's just one of those things and and for us like that's we just like being out there like mm -hmm. we just like being outside and being in the mountains. And so being able to do that and spend a full few days instead of being like stressed out the entire time that you're out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a difference maker for me and it makes it more enjoyable. I think, um, all around, all around for the trip. Yeah. hundred percent. And this year I won't, I won't lie. I, I kind of slipped into the mindset of being stressed out a little bit about the hunt. Um, there was this one morning where I came to pick Thomas up and he had slept in, which I can't blame him. I've done it before where we were going to go fishing and I slept in. So it's happened on both ends. But the situation was I was going to pick him up. We were going to go out hunting. He slept in. And so I went up anyways. I was sitting this area and he texted me. He's like, crap, dude, I just woke up. I'm running late. I'm on my way up here. And I was so stressed out about I need to get something down. That I was like, nah, dude, you're gonna screw it all up. <laughs> you're gonna I'm, make a bunch of noise. I'm already in this area. You go like go somewhere else. Or <laughs> Basically, stay home. go away. Yeah, just go away. I, I was like, no, I'm I'm, I'm good, dude. I uh, I don't want you to screw this up for me, which is stupid. <laughs> like, I, and I didn't enjoy myself that day. I was stressed out for for what? You know, if you're you can't enjoy, it, I'm not gonna starve to death if I don't get an animal. I I want to hunt. I want to get that meat in the freezer. It's awesome. It saves money. Whatever, but. To the point of me not enjoying the outdoors anymore and not enjoying time in the wilderness, it's just not worth it for me. And so I don't know what the factors were really. You know, I just, it might have been because we didn't spend the amount of time and we were limited and we were running we out, were trying to get something going. Or maybe it was because I was getting all these pictures of these awesome bulls in an area that I couldn't hunt, which was frustrating. I, I don't know what all the factors were, but yeah, I just, I kind of thought about it that day after I was like, yeah, Thomas, don't come up. I'm, I don't want you to screw this hunt up for me because you slept in. I just was like, this is, I'm not enjoying myself. And I went home and I was like, yeah, that, and I texted Thomas like that night and I was like, dude, I'm sorry. Like, I, I don't want to get to the point where I'm not enjoying hunting anymore, where it's, it's stressing me out right. because it should be the opposite. Yeah. It, it's a stress it should, reliever. Yeah. It should be an escape. You know, from the from the stress of everyday life, for me anyways, that's how I view it. Yeah, and I think that that's how a lot of just outdoor activities should be viewed in general. Like, I think, uh, like, I laugh because, um, you know, my, my in-laws, they're really into backpacking and just hiking. And I've never really gotten into that because I'm like, what's the point? Like, you're just walking. <laughs> and and then one time they, uh, they brought up the point, they're like, well, that's hunting. Like, all you do is walk around with a backpack on your back. I was like... That's true, but like there's a purpose behind it for me, you know, like I'm yeah. hoping I see something, but at the end of the day, it just comes down to if you're not enjoying it, then it's really not worth it. Um, and so that's kind of what we're hoping to continue to do with this podcast and with just like our business in general is just find ways for people to get outside and enjoy it. Um, you know, for, for us, that's hunting and fishing. We talk about that all the time, Yeah. but for other people that might be backpacking, that might be hiking, that might be, uh, you know, what, just a number of things. And so we're hoping to kind of expand our talking points to cover some of those things. But end of the day, like if you're not having fun, you're not, 
I feel like you're just not doing it right. So it's just kind of, you got to find what's, what's enjoyable and then kind of stick to that and, and appreciate it when you're in the moments. Right. And and I think that it might not be fair to say if you're not enjoying yourself all the time, you're doing it wrong because oh, yeah, because you can experience frustration. We, we experience frustration yeah. all the time, especially when we're fishing. Oh, <laughs> like We've talked about our opening day experience with Henry's and how awesome it was. That's uh, not normal. T- talk, talk about our experience the next time we went up there, Tom. <laughs> Zero. Zero well, fish. Well, I caught one. Ben caught one fish. <laughs> if you can call it that. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll, we were frustrated. And it's like, what the heck changed? Yeah. And, it, that's, and it, it can be frustrating, too, at, at moments. But I think if you go out and it's like automatic stress of I have to get something done. I have yeah. to shoot something bigger than my friend. I have to catch fish or I'm not a man. You know, like I think that that's where you, you are doing it wrong. Well, and I think it can go with like with anything, like you have good days and bad days, but at the end of the day, like, is it something that gives you, you know, joy? Like, is it something that makes you happy and appreciate the things that are around you? Cause I think you can find that in variety of things like even if you're if you're a runner you just like running yeah. you might wake up one day feeling sluggish you don't want to run but that doesn't mean that the next day you're not feeling super strong and ready to go so it it really does like i i guess i retract that comment of if you're not enjoying it then you're doing it wrong but i think overall if it doesn't bring you positive feelings and make you you know excited for your next trip out i think that's where you know you might be missing something right yeah. but you know obviously you experience experience frustrations and you know disappointments but at the end of the day like if you're excited to go out again then that's what i think is a is a big uh i guess sign that you're doing something right right and i don't know i just think that life is too crazy and too stressful and it just it gets so on top of you that if your hobbies are that way too then you're probably going to be miserable in life. We're kind of like drifting into some philosophical topics. <laughs> We're deep here. now. We're in deep now. But I, I just think that it can be so much more beneficial than that fish that you catch. It can be so much more beneficial than that set of antlers that you have on the wall or even the meat that's in the freezer. We, we talk about that a lot. We talk a lot about the reasons behind what we do as far as hunting and fishing, you know, about putting meat on the table, food for your family, um, having these good experiences in the outdoors. But I, I think it goes beyond just the harvesting of meat. I think it just goes beyond hanging antlers on the wall. I think that in our DNA <laughs> it yeah. is something that we we used to do every single day. And I think that it is something that when I go back into the outdoors, when I go into the woods and I'm not having these stresses, I'm not feeling the pressure that I have to get something done or, or I'm not this macho man or I'm, I'm going to have tag soup instead of getting an animal. <laughs> when, when I can put that aside and actually enjoy it, which I would say is the majority of the time, yeah. it's refreshing. It, it feeds me and you know, it's like I'm resetting my batteries Re- recharging up for for the week ahead or yep. for the for the monotony of everyday life yep and i think that yeah. i mean that's what that's what's so exciting now like we 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 didn't tag out with our archery tag but you know now we have something to look forward to we're looking forward to our late season cow hunt yeah coming up with a rifle um we've got some other things going on if some you, white tail yeah if you're following us on our social media you've been seeing that we've been going out duck hunting we're going duck hunting tomorrow so bright and early bright and early so though i mean there's always something that can get you into doing what you love and that's what's so cool um about doing this podcast is it kind of makes us appreciate and reflect on the things that we're doing and so um you know even though we didn't tag out with our our tree there's always something better to look forward to and so hopefully we'll tag out with the rifles right and and we learned a ton of lessons this year (laughs) yeah from from our archery elk hunt well and for like buy the right tag (laughs) <laughs> buy, the, buy the right tag and for me like i seriously learned everything about archery this year like it yeah. was so cool just something to expand your knowledge and get you you know like we always say just something that builds your confidence like that's for me like i'm now more confident in going out and hunting with a bow mm-hmm. and that you know and that's exciting and it's cool yeah yeah so so we uh we have things to look forward to constantly things to look forward to any t- any day that we spend out in in the woods is 
a day to look forward to, in my opinion. <laughs> we're going duck hunting in the morning. We were debating on where we we're going to go. We went last week for like the opening. Um, it wasn't the opening day, but it was the opening weekend. Yeah. And yeah, we shot a ton of ducks and it was so fun. And we're not going to that spot. Uh, it's a great spot. But we, we're we excited to try somewhere else and we might not shoot anything. We haven't been in this area, but that's the fun of it. Yeah. It's a new spot. Let's, we're let's go and learn. Let's go enjoy it. If we don't shoot anything, we'll whatever. We'll go back to our old spot. And we'll go freeze <laughs> our butts off tomorrow because it's going to be cold and windy. Yep. And we might not shoot any ducks, but we might shoot way more ducks than we did the other day. Who knows? Yeah. So it's the fun. It's the adventure. It's it's getting out there and, and just enjoying yourself while you're doing it. Yep. And I think that that, I think with that, I think that we're kind of wrapping up this episode. Yeah. We want you guys, we always say it, but we really do want your feedback. Uh, so hit us up, visit our website, www.forgottenoutdoors.com. We just had some new sweatshirts hit the hit the shop. Oh, and they're freaking awesome. We're super excited about them. They're the heaviest sweatshirt you'll ever Keep own. Keep talking, Tom. <laughs> Ben's going to go get one. Yeah, they're, they're awesome. They're, they're great for these colder months that are ahead of us. Um, yeah, so we, we've got that hitting the shop. We've got some really exciting stuff happening right now. Um, we're not going to give it all away, but we're, you know, we're getting ready to uh, finalize a partnership with another company. These sweatshirts are freaking dope. We love them. Heck yeah. They're very heavy. Uh, they're very warm. So yeah, we're getting ready to partner uh, with another company, start selling their stuff. Um, so we're excited. We've got a lot of good things happening. And so follow along with us, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Hit us up on social media or hit us up through email. You can do podcast at ForgottenOutdoors.com or you can go onto our website, again, ForgottenOutdoors.com and you can fill out our form. Um, we want to hear from you. Tell us what you want to hear about. Tell us what you, want, what you want us to talk about on the podcast. Yes, sir. As always, we appreciate it, guys. We we love doing this. Uh, we, we love uh, talking about these things and hearing your feedback. It's it's exciting every time yeah. we have one of you guys reach out or... Maybe not every time, but the majority of the times that we have people reach out and, and talk to us, Thomas and I are like texting each other. Oh, did you see that comment? Oh, yeah, that's awesome. People are actually like engaged with this. Yep. So it's fun. It's a fun ride. Uh, we love what we're doing. Yeah, go check out our stores, all that stuff that Thomas said, and we will catch you guys on the next episode. See ya. And with that, it's a wrap. It's a wrap.